Hi, I'm Ben Covage from Elevated Trips at elevatedtrips.com, and today we're going to explore Tang Bo Monastery. Okay, so we are driving from Xining to Qinghai Lake. We're about 40 kilometers from Qinghai Lake. It is the first week of April and it is snowing. It is quite cold out here. We're at 3,200 meters, right around 10,000 feet in elevation, right by Qinghai Lake. And we're here at Tang Bo Monastery. The monastery represents a trading road between the Tang Dynasty and Tibet, which was then known as the Bo Kingdom. So the, the road actually ran from the capital of the Tang Dynasty in Xi'an to the capital of Tibet in Lhasa. So this is a very important road for trade and political relations between China and Tibet historically. And the road happened right around the 7th century. So we're going to explore a little bit more of the Tang Tangbo Monastery and what this monastery represents between Tibet and Chinese relations. Tangbo Monastery and what we're looking at here behind me are seven hills that are inscribed with the Tibetan mantra Om Mane Padme Om. That Tibetan mantra is actually written in white stones on the hill. You can see it there on the hill and for the next seven continuous hills behind us that mantra is written on each of one of those hills. And the reason that is significant is because it doesn't look like much to us. It just looks like a bunch of brown hills in the snow but actually just under that Tibetan mantra is the very road that Prince Shung, Princess Wenchung went on for, as she traveled from Xi'an to Lhasa, from the capital of the Tang Dynasty to the, to the capital of the Tibetan Kingdom. And that is very important because in the year 641 AD, Princess Wenchung left Xi'an and traveled three years until 644 AD until she arrived in Lhasa to marry the Tibetan king, the 32nd Tibetan king, Songsen Gompo. And this is the road, the very road that she traveled 1,400 years ago, right behind us. And so that is a very important road, not just for the marriage of Princess Wenchang and King Songsen Gompo, but also as a symbol of unity between the Tibetan kingdom and the Chinese Tang dynasty. One particular feature of this monastery are these money stones that are hand carved by local people. And each stone is hand carved with particular scriptures, holy scriptures. And in this particular stone, you can see they've actually hand carved the Buddha, the imprint of the Buddha in the scripture and then painted over. <laughs> and so you can see this is an entire wall full of particular scriptures. And in some cases, there's only one Tibetan letter that represents a, a holy prayer there. And other scriptures and other stones, the, the whole stone is, is carved with many, many letters, which signifies a prayer to various gods or deities, perhaps Tara, or to perhaps various deities around Qinghai Lake.
I want to talk a little bit about some features around Tangbo Monastery. And right here we have ascended to this hill next to the Korten. And we're actually, this is one of the very first spots where we get a very good view of Qinghai Lake. Of course, today it's snowing. It's quite cloudy, so we're, we don't see Qinghai Lake today. But if you look about 40 to 50 kilometers in this direction, you can see the very most eastern edge of Qinghai Lake, which is Qinghai's largest salt lake. It's about 120 kilometers long, so that's very, very long. And in fact, the lake is so large, you can actually see it from space. Today, we don't have a very good view of it, but normally, if the sky was sunny today, we'd have a great view of Qinghai Lake. 